Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, last video on uh, mobile repairing. So far we have tried to understand everything right from the parts of a mobile phone to the understanding the internal components including chip components in a mobile phone apart from a few accessories and other devices that we use in the mobile repairing trade. Now finally, we come to another important aspect that is very critical in mobile repairing which is the software aspect of a mobile phone. What is the software? The software is the part which actually controls what is happening in the mobile phone and in simple terms your display shows whatever is happening in the mobile phone on a graphic user format. Now many times the software inside your mobile phone can become corrupt and if the software is corrupt you will experience problems like the mobile restarting on its own or the mobile hanging without uh, any impact on it which means you keep pressing the keys and nothing happens on the screen. These are indications of a software problem in the mobile phone. Now in order to correct this problem we need to flash these mobile phones with the correct software. Flashing essentially is a process by which we reinstall the software in a mobile phone. Now once we reinstall the software the mobile's internal components or the ability to function normally will be restored to its original position. Now in order to flash any mobile phone you will need some tools that will be required to do this process. First of all you will need a software that will be required for flashing onto a mobile phone. This flashing software is called UFS in other words it stands for universal flashing software. So the universal flashing software is a software that is used universally for multiple mobile phones and using this software you can flash any mobile phone. Now as you can see when you first receive the UFS you have to install it first. So when you open the installer you will see the options that you see on your screen. The option N basically means next, C means cancel and B above means that you can browse a particular folder using this option. Now different UFS boxes or different UFS softwares come in different languages. Here we are using a different language and that is why the font is not available on this computer. So it is showing it in a very um, uh, unrecognizable uh, language. But uh, nowadays we have a lot of UFS which are available in English language also and you will be able to understand the instructions. Once you click on the next option here you will be able to install the software on your computer and once you have installed the software you can then go ahead and do flashing of mobile phones. In this system we have already installed the UFS and that is why we are not going to be installing it again in this. So whenever you pick up an UFS from any UFS from the market there are some components that come along with it. One it will have a CD which will have the software to flash mobile phones. Now that is how we have received this software also. Apart from the CD we also have some hardware components that we receive when we buy the UFS package in the market. So when you are installing the software the system will also show you how much space is needed for installing the software. In this case we will need about 342.53 MB and the system has around 15.48 GB which means there is sufficient space available in the system to install this particular software. So whenever you are installing if there is lesser space the system will show you and you can then make space for so much um, on the hard disk and then install the UFS software. Now apart from the software there are few hardware components that we will require. Let us take a look at these hardware components that come along with the UFS kit. This is called the UFS box or the flashing box. The flashing box is the key component that connects the computer to the mobile phone and helps in installing the software onto the mobile phone. Now there are different types of UFS boxes which are available in the market. 
you can try and look at what boxes or what type of mobile phone each box supports and then purchase the respective box. Now, some of these connectors as you can see are critical in connecting the UFS box to the mobile phone. A few LEDs are also placed here which will show or display the position of power and transmission that's happening between the computer and the mobile phone. The first is the RJ45 connector. This connector is how you use, this is the connector we use to connect the mobile PCB to the UFS box. On the other side, you will see two more points. There is a USB point as well as another larger USB point. So the larger USB point is where we connect the computer to the UFS box. So you will get this cable also along with the UFS box when you purchase the UFS box. So you connect the larger USB point in the UFS box and on the other hand, you connect it to the USB port of a computer. So this is a normal USB uh, point and you connect it to the USB port of a computer. So once this is connected, you will be able to see the indicator that there is power coming in and it's connected to the computer. Once this is connected, you can then open the software to start off the flashing process. Let's now go and start the software that we installed uh, earlier on the computer. So let's go ahead and double click that and open it. Now once you open it, on the left hand side, you will be able to see different mobile phone names mentioned there. So you have Nokia, Sony, Samsung and several other setup options. We are going to now try it on a Nokia mobile phone, so we choose the Nokia series and within that you need to go to the DCT4 operation. So the DCT4 operation is what is primarily used for flashing a software or flashing a mobile software onto the mobile PCB. So you can click on that select it and click on the run option on top. When you click on the run option, it will open up the entire flashing tool in front of you. As you can see, this is the final flashing tool that we are going to be using to flash it. You can click on the connect button on top to try and connect the flash box or the UFS box to the computer. Once you have connected it, we will then try and connect the UFS box to the mobile PCB. Now for this mobile, we are using a Nokia 1600 mobile phone PCB. So you can choose the respective mobile phone option there. And then you will need to load a few of the flashing files onto the UFS box. To do that, we click and select each of these options. Now you may need to know exactly which is the file that needs to be used. You can find this information online on internet if you search for individual mobile phones. The information will help you decide which file to be loaded in which position. So the three components called MCU, PPM and CNT and all these three components have different files that need to be loaded onto the system. Once these files are loaded, the system is now ready to start the flashing process. Now in order to connect the UFS box to the mobile phone, we use, in order to connect the mobile phone to the UFS box, we use this cable. This is the connecting cable. Now there are different types of cables that you receive. Each cable is for a different type of mobile phone. You will be able to see multiple types of cables such as these. The reason why we have different cables is because the software tip in each of the mobile phone are in different positions and different patterns and therefore you need different cables to connect each of these. So when you buy the UFS box, you will also have the option of buying the cables either as a bulk or you can specifically pick up each of the USB cables, each of the flashing cables depending on the mobile phone that you need to flash. Now in order to connect this, we will take the one end of the uh, UFS, UFS cable and plug it into the RJ45 socket that we saw earlier. Once we have connected that point, you can place the other end on the software tip of a mobile phone PCB. Now a software tip 
if you can look at the mobile phone, let's try and look at where the software tip is. Now, this is a typical mobile phone. The back side, you will be able to see battery connector. There's a SIM card slot. Close to the SIM card slot is where you will see the software tip. So, the battery connector is there. The SIM card slot is there. And this is where the software point is. So, you see those six dots there. That is where the UFS box will be connected to the PCB. And once the UFS box is connected to the PCB, it will be able to transfer information of the necessary software from the mobile phone to the, from the computer to the mobile phone PCB. So, typically the cable fits in into this position there. You can see the points on the connector very clearly. So, on the top it connects to the battery and on the bottom it connects to the software tip. And this is how you normally flash a mobile phone without opening the mobile phone. So, you can do the flashing process without removing the PCB. But because we have already removed the PCB, we can try doing it directly on the PCB as well. So, you place it on the point and you press it a little hard and then initiate the process for flashing. Once you have connected it, you need to first check whether the connection is complete. So, you press on the check button and wait for an OK message to appear in the results window. If there is no OK, which means there is some connectivity problem. Just as for example, there is some boot error now. So, let us try and uh, reconnect these points properly, ensure that they are all connected in the right direction and then place the connecting tip back again at the software tip. Ensure that the connecting tip is connected as well as the battery connector is also properly connected. And let us do the check again. Now, it says first boot is OK, which means the connectivity is intact and now the mobile phone PCB is ready to be flashed. Once you go to that, you click on the flash button on top and then it will start doing the flashing operation. Now, if you clearly see flashing operation has started, currently it is now erasing whatever software exists on the mobile phone already. Now, remember while you are doing the flashing process, you must ensure that you hold the connecting tips properly. If you remove it or if you move the connecting tip at any point, it can spoil the entire process and your flashing may not happen properly. So, once the original software on the mobile PCB is erased, we will then start copying the new uh, files or the new software back onto the mobile PCB. So, it is a slightly longer process, it has multiple uh, uh, levels and it has to flash multiple components. So, the three components that we loaded earlier, MCU, PPM and CNT. So, each of these components will then be copied on to the mobile phone PCB. And you can see the status message here. If there is any error at any point in this, it will display that and you may need to redo the flashing. So, any fault that comes because of a software error can be rectified using this flashing process. Now, flashing is a complicated one. It touches the software components of the mobile phone. So, it is advised that you read through and understand how the entire process happens before you start working on a customer's mobile. As you can see now, the entire flashing process is complete and the screen is back to the start position now, which basically means that the flashing is complete. The software has been loaded. There has been no errors detected. Now, you can go back and place the PCB back in the mobile phone and test whether the new software is working properly or not. So, you can remove the uh, tip from the mobile phone, place it back in the mobile phone and check whether the entire flashing, flashing process is completed properly. As I said earlier, please ensure that you are thorough on this process before you start flashing customers mobile phones. There are plenty of tools available online. There are forums available online where you can read a lot more about how this entire process happens for different mobile phones. Read through them, understand them carefully before you start working on any of these processes on your customers' mobile phones. Now remember, this whole process can be used for any of the feature phones that we have seen in, these, in this entire course or even for several Chinese mobile phones that are available in the market. 
For Android and other phones, there are different types of flashing processes that are available. We will learn about all of them in a future course on advanced mobile repairing. We do hope you would have learnt a lot from this entire course. Thank you very much and good luck.